Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. My name is Alakunle Kasumo, and it's always great to be on this show where we discuss all things books. I love books, <laughs> talking books, reading books, reviewing books. That's what it's all about. And this is the show where we do all that. Thank you for joining us. Well, today is interesting. Remember last week where we hosted two very unique guests? Festus and Chinyere Ashade. Chinyere had had a tragic accident and lost her limbs. But despite that, she has faced life positively with a lot of energy and enthusiasm. She's inspiring people. She's singing. She's releasing her albums. She's writing. She's just doing all sorts of things. She's a type of person you look at and you say, ah, it doesn't matter what my problems are. I can face life. And of course, with her supportive and wonderful husband, Festus. They joined us on Channel's Book Club to discuss their book, which is in itself <laughs> unique. Uh, remember, we showed you that book, how one side is the title of one book, and then the other side is the title of another book, a twin book, like Chingere would love to describe it. Well, we promise that we will continue that interview or conclude that interview this week, and we are going to keep that promise. So, first of all, a conversation with Festus and Chingere, and then we'll move on to some other interesting things on the show. Enjoy this. Juanita Chingere Ashade is a broadcast journalist, a music minister, and an author. She's the director of programs, operations, and lead presenter at Voice of Nigeria. Juanita Chinyere is married to Festus Ayodele Ashade, a pastor at Foursquare Gospel Church in Nigeria. Festus works in the Federal Civil Service. He's a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. The couple are the authors of the twin book titled Grace Immeasurable and Mercy Unlimited. Grace Immeasurable is offered by Juanita, while Festus is the author of Mercy Unlimited. For both join Channels Book Club to discuss the twin book. Who are you trying to reach, you know, with this book? Who are you trying to speak to? Mm, well, from my point of view, that's the grace point of view. It's People are hurting. People are going through a whole lot of things. I remember um, someone who read it, read the book when it first came out. Um, she had been going through her own challenges and she came back and said, Kai, by the time I finished reading your book, I had to talk to myself. Or I just had to talk to myself and say, look, you just have to get yourself together. I mean, if um, she can be going through this and she's still praising God and everything. So why should I be wetting my pillow every night? And she said she talked to herself, but she got encouraged by it. And I said, that's mission accomplished mm. for me. And that is really the message I just want to go. Like I said, people are hurt. Uh, we've heard of people, like you said, who've gone into depression because of the challenges of life, things that have come upon them, fate, things that perhaps fate, they'll say fate has thrown upon them. But... They need to know that just a little bit of holding on to God, trusting in him. Like I said, I went back to the word immediately, the book of Job, and I drew strength from there. And that was it. It spurred me on and I continued. So people need to know that. So remember there was a time there was a whole lot of people jumping in, wanting to commit suicide and all that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if they had had some kind of encouragement, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. So people need to know. And that's why I also did the audio book. Mm -hmm. uh, as you may have known, yeah. so that for those who don't have enough time to or patience to sit down and read, can listen to my account and draw strength from it. That's just all that is about. It can't be a wasted ex a wasted ex a wasted um, encounter, a wasted thing. Since I've gone through this, God, let your purpose be fulfilled. Let people be blessed. Let people be and strengthened, and encouraged the way I am being. Then it's okay. So mm. it's not a wasted experience. Mm. Mm. There are uh, uh, many themes um, in your book that I saw. Um, faith, love, community. Um, I mean, people coming around you. We, we can't go through life alone, clearly. 
uh, we need other people. And your story talks about how family, friends, even strangers, um, the church community came around, you know, and strengthened you, at times helped to raise money, you know, and all that. I found those themes very powerful, reading them. Because when I'm reading a book, I'm always looking out for themes. You know, what is the theme? What are the themes here? You know, and I, and I liked seeing love and faith. And, and there's also that, I mean, I, I just spoke about love. Not just the love of people around you, but also I saw your love for her because, uh, for better, for worse. Because, yeah, for better, for worse. My own grandmother, uh, my grandfather became blind six months after um, he married my grandmother. Wow. And they were together for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine that. I mean, that always inspires me. She, mm. she, stood, she stood by him all those many years. So um, I saw that in your story. And I would like you to speak about some of these themes, whether um, you deliberately set out to write about them or they just came out of your story. And I would like you to particularly talk about what I just spoke about. So, uh, what happened after your wife had this um, experience of losing her limb and you stood in there? Well, I thank you for this opportunity <laughs> because uh, <laughs> while we were uh, cutting, I know there is one inscription, one scripture in particular that she's faithfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and living with or without her limbs will not change anything. Mm. <laughs> and therefore... <laughs> she's when, blushing. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, <laughs> it was at a time to actually do the needful. One thing is that I have seen the mercy of God all over through the numerous people who came around to support, to encourage. And of course, the introduction in the book, you see all important hour, all important uh, 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 blood group, all important. They mm -hmm. are to tell how God stepped into our case. There are people who really, they will face such a challenge, and uh, instead of having people around them, every other person, give one excuse or the other, mm. and they are out. Mm -hmm. But God showed mercy. That people mm. were around us mm. to also encourage us. Yeah. Prayerfully, yeah. in all respect, financially. Yeah. And uh, we thank God, if not for God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's one part there. When she was having another challenge after discharge from the hospital, she was told they are investigating or she had uh, what they call um, the, what do you call TB, it? The TB, TB of the spine or something. Of the spine. Oh, yeah, the spine, yeah, because you yes. had been sitting for too long. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it was one of the uh, uh, doctors who was not more in particular about making money, Dr. Otabo, in his hospital, Alliance Hospital, that got also used. Because all the gains of recovery from the other private hospital will have been lost because mm. they wanted to expose her to another surgery. Mm. And we saw something was going wrong here. And God showed mercy. In the dream that I had that morning, we said, let us go for second opinion. That is also deliberate. Mm. Sometimes we want to take certain, we feel that we are boxed, we have not, that's, that second opinion mm. we got. Mm. led to stoppage of even this surgery. Mm. Mm. And <laughs> by the grace of God, things became normal. Normal. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 um, Chiri, you enter the world of 
I have so many questions for you, but I don't have time. <laughs> I have so many questions, I don't have time. Uh, um, I mean, you've been in radio yeah. um, for decades. Yeah. Uh, and you're still, still there. You're still on radio now. Well, what's it like? Um, I mean, the golden radio voice. People meet you after. <laughs> People meet you after. You know, um, have you had experiences where um, people thought you were the old Chinere, but they met you physically and saw that you were on a wheelchair? Have you ever had, I was, I'm looking for some, some interesting anecdotes, you know, that connects your experience with your radio career and all, well, all that. Well, maybe what, one of the challenges I had um, during the COVID era um, I had just gotten back to work then because, you know, I was at home for a long time and um, it was during the COVID era that I got back to oh, work and um, we were having this program, which um, a special, of course, in every station was, we we're doing special programs mm -hmm. then, which I was doing. And um, then our office was still in Radio House, which was a high, which is a high rise. And um, I had done a couple of editions and then there was this Saturday that I got there, I was supposed to do it. And for one reason or the other, which could happen anyway, the lift was down. So I had to stay downstairs and start calling a colleague, please, I can't get upstairs. And I'm supposed to go on air in the next maybe one hour, 30 minutes, and there's no chance that I'm going to be able to get up. Please come and handle the program for me. I felt very bad. I felt very discouraged about it that, oh my God, this is a limitation. Because ordinarily I would have just walked up the stairs. It's on the seventh floor then. Um... Fortunately, now we've moved to our own place. Uh, we have our own headquarters where I work, and um, things are much better there, although we still have such challenges from time to time. But um, those are some of the limitations you face when you, there are certain places you can't get to, and um, just because you're on a chair now and all of that. But one thing about me, like I said, that's why I ask myself whether I'm for real. <laughs> I, I ask myself, that I just shake it off and... I move on with life. <laughs> I just move on and I make the best of it. I say, okay, well, it's not meant to be. Go and have fun. It's your time. It's not my time. And I, I, I remember then I would tell them, because I remember when, when I first joined Vaughn, there's a program we had and um, it was one of our, one of my senior colleagues was the only one doing that flagship 30 minute morning, uh, you know, news magazine then. And I said, God, I want to do that program. Why should he be the one to do it all the time? <laughs> and there was a day, they, I think the drivers were not able to pick him. So and they came to me because I lived near the office then in Lagos. They came and took me. And that was the first day I did. I said, aha, now I'm having the opportunity of doing this special program. So when it happened to me too, I said, maybe somebody was also wanting to do this program, <laughs> which I had hijacked as, <laughs> the, as my own flagship COVID program. And maybe somebody else was also wanting to do it and has the opportunity to, so I said, things just work out that way. God yeah. knows why he allows things to happen. It's just good to leave things that way and move on. No. Otherwise you just um, have a lot of uh, regrets. Oh, wow. Well, this is where we have to um, end this con conversation because of time. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And I hope people out there will look for Mercy Unlimited and Grace Immeasurable. The problem is when you get to a, to a bookshop, which title do you mention? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, you just say, I, I, you can mention either of the two titles to pop out. <laughs> so, nice to have this conversation with you. Thank you very much for joining us on Channels Book Club. It's been our pleasure too. Thanks so Thank much you. for Thank you. inviting us. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Yeah. What an inspiring story. Do you have one? If you do, send it to us via Twitter, via Facebook, via, well, Twitter is no longer Twitter, I forgot. X, we call it these days. Send it to us via X, via Facebook, via Instagram, and let's share your story, your inspiring story. Hmm. Nigeria Prize for Literature, sponsored by NLNG. I have to confess I'm a fan of NLNG. You know why? Because... You know, in Nigeria, companies, corporate organizations sponsor all sorts of events. And kudos to them. Entertainment events, sporting events, and all types of events are sponsored by corporate organizations in Nigeria. But I'm always fascinated by corporate organizations that choose to sponsor 
intellectual activities, intellectual competitions. Fantastic. Nigeria needs a lot more of that. Let's see the big money put into quizzes and debates and essay writing and researches and all that. For many years, Nigeria Prize for Literature has been on, sponsored by NLNG. $100,000 is the big prize won by the, the writer who wins for a particular year. And it's on again this year. NLNG sponsoring Nigeria Prize for Literature 2023. First, 11 writers were longlisted, and then three of them were shortlisted. Now, those three, one of them is going to pick up the big prize, $100,000. It's just wonderful to see that writing is being rewarded. Just so wonderful. Corporate organizations out there, go for it. There's so many other activities and events and competitions that need your support. I mean, intellectual activities and competitions that need your support out there. Well done, NLNG. Well, book first. Rainbow Book Club and Nigeria Prize for Literature combining to organize a book first for the three shortlisted writers for the, NLA, for the Nigeria Prize for Literature 2023. Now, these three writers, remember we introduced them to you the last time, but you'll get to see their books again on the show this week. We just flash the titles so that you can be reminded of, of the books. But the book first was recently organized, and it was so much fun. The writers and their books were introduced to the public in Port Harcourt. Enjoy this. The Potako Book Festival 2023 was lit with glitz and glamour as it was all about hosting and celebrating the three finalists of the Nigeria Prize for Literature. The playwrights who made it to the three finalists include Abadin Abolaji Ojemu, the author of Ojuelaba Crossroads, Henry Akubiro, the author of the book Yam Tarawala, The Warrior King, and Obare Gwomba, author of the book Grit. The Nigeria Prize for Literature 2023, which focuses on drama, has a grand prize of 100,000 US dollars for the winner and is sponsored by the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas and LNG Limited. The event to mark the Book Festival 2023 kick-started with a welcome address by the representative of the founder and chief executive officer of Rainbow Book Club, Mrs. Koko Kalango, represented by Mrs. Ijoma Agubo. In a world book capital city, we expect to see a full-blown book festival. We expect to see functional libraries. We expect to see the book clubs that were set up sustained and more, more books published and generally more support for literary groups and the herd, the conversation with our three star writers. After we have wined and dined, allow me to leave you all with one charge. Together, let us bring back our world book capital. Her speech was followed by the address from the sponsors of both the Potokot Book Festival and the Literature Prize, the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas and LNG Limited, presented by the company's general manager, external relations and sustainable development, Andy O'Day. As you may already know, the Nigeria Prize for Literature runs for a four-year cycle between drama, prose, fiction, poetry, and children's literature. And to date, the prize has recorded over 2,500 entries and celebrated 17 winning books. Feedback is that the volume of work has inspired a lot of Nigerians, um, not just in literary community, but either in movie making, um, in documentaries, and ensuring that some of the works have become uh, reference books in schools. The playwrights present at the book fest read and explained the shortlisted books. 
White Eye enters, removes his baseball cap, and kneels down. White Eye, salute, sir. Respect, sir. Bambo, rise up. How did he go? White Eye, we do him, sir. One hand, sir. They run like goat for back door, sir. We see them as they run, but we no shoot them, sir. Good job. Bambo, good job. White Eye, we for finish them, sir. But you no give orders, sir. Bambo, this one I just warning. If they behave anyhow, then go see anyhow. When I wanted to write this story, Ian Tarawala, the Warrior King, I wanted to write a novel initially. So I, I, asked, I thought about it, I said, this work will make a better drama than a novel. Because we are talking about a history, we are talking about actions, we are talking about war, we are talking about culture, we are talking about um, gender inequality. So I decided to marry all these things together to create Yam Trawa the Wallet in, in drama instead of um, novel. Exceptional, exceptional storytelling. A round of applause for them, please. The Nigeria Prize for Literature rotates yearly among four genres. Prose fiction, poetry, drama, and children's literature, and focuses on drama in this year's competition. One of those three writers will pick up the big prize very soon. Stay tuned to this show. We'll keep you posted on all the details you need to have for the announcement of the winner of the Nigeria Prize for Literature 2023. Before we go today, let's have a reading. Enjoy this. Today, I will be talking about Ladder to the Top and also reading from Ladder to the Top, a book of prose for young adults. I started writing Ladder to the Top when I was 13 years old, though I had the concept when I was um, 12, 12 years old. So I made a lot of drafts and by age 13, I was fully into the book and I finished this when I was 14 years old. So Ladder to the Top was a big inspiration for me because I was just into high school then and I saw a lot of things that I wanted to talk about and pass across to the world in general. So I will be reading from a chapter. Hold on, let's see. The first chapter titled How It All Started, How It All Began at Blooming Roses High. And this is on page 10. It took Eva only a few minutes to accomplish her mission. As she exited, Hands full with a branded carrier bag, she bumped into an old friend. Oops, so sorry, the guy apologized. No problem, guess I was clumsy, Eva explained as he helped pick up her carrier bag on the curb. Have it, Eva, he said, extending his hand. Gee, Kiran, it's been ages since I saw you last, she smiled. Absolutely, seeing you looking all big makes me think time upsurges. Nice to meet you once again. Their bodies clasped briefly in a hug. I should say that. So how's life been since you left us behind without a single word of goodbye? It hurt back then, you know. It hurt us all, a lot. And we all wished we could turn back the hands of time. Eva beat her bottom lip, trying to stop herself from getting emotional. I'm sorry for causing you all such heartbreak, but that arrow came out of the blue. Yet, we all have to continue in the turmoil of life you know, life's got its trials which sometimes occurs for our betterment, even if it would only make sense years after or even after one's death when your offsprings would recollect memories and sometimes they happen for us to become wiser. Kiran shrugged, only the creator knows better. This is where we have to end the show today. As always, we'll be delighted to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumu. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.